good evening. But my topic is homelessness and the effects it has on child development, society, and mental health. Um, before I even start, I want to share a little story about what happened to me as a child. Around the age of 12, I was seeing, I remember I going to a McDonald's with my mom and I, and I saw a homeless men on the street. Now, with the way I had grown up, I'd always thought that if a homeless person was on the streets, they'd either put themselves there, just not work hard enough, or they just didn't try. But something kept pulling my heart towards helping it, and I did. And I asked him, well, what do you want to eat? And he said, a burger and a drink would be just fine. So we got a forum, and the smile that blossomed in the man's face after we gave him the meal just made me want to help homeless people after that. Let's start. My first topic will be the effect of homelessness on child development. An estimated 171,575 people, or 55,739 family households, have been identified as homeless families. Homelessness can have a tremendous impact on children, but luckily, children are shown to be a lot more resilient towards these effects. Um, they can have an effect on their education, their health, their sense of safety, and their overall development. Children, also, children who have <laughs> been homeless also have higher levels of emotional and behavior problems. They have experienced hardship from their families, and they also experience a lot more school mobility. They are P per grade, where they have a more likely chance of being expelled from school. Um, next up, the effect of homelessness on society. Now, we might all see a homeless man on the streets, and sure, we could all feel pity for a minute or two, and we would move on in our daily lives. But homelessness really affects us more than we think. Um, first, the first way it affects us is it costs the government more money. According to a 2017 study in California, homeless person cost the government an average of $38,000 and $146. <laughs> Um, a country that's kind of gotten rid of this cost is Finland. They've, they started to do a program called More Permanent Housing, where they, where they help people who are homeless get permanent housing before helping them fix their problems beforehand. Um, second reason is it poses a threat to public health. Um, there was a situation where hepatitis A, I believe, in 2018 ravaged the streets of California, and it was shown that the streets who had a higher population of people who were homeless also had a higher amount of people who have hepatitis A. Third of all, it creates social barriers. People who are homeless are ashamed, they need help, but they also, they don't want to ask for it. And we, on the other hand, who've probably never experienced homelessness, always think, we're always thinking on the other side that they're just not trying enough. The lack of empathy from one side and the fear of being judged by the other often leads to a breakdown of communication. This in turn drives a thick and visible wall between the two sides, it becomes that us, versus them instead of we against poverty. And my last topic is the effect of homelessness on mental health. Months of homeless experience by roughly one third of the homeless community and it's a major barrier to getting off the streets. According to the Canadian Population Health Initiative, up to 61% of homeless adults experience suicidal thoughts. And this might just be because they have no one to comfort them, they have, they're all alone or they just feel ashamed of where they currently are. To show how affected we are by this, I took three states, Oklahoma, Florida, and California, and I decided to research into how many people were homeless per day and how many students were affected each year. According to, as of January 2020, 2020 Oklahoma has an estimated 3,932 people on the streets on any given day. And public school data also shows that Oklahoma has 23,000 students, 372 who are, who are shown to be homeless every given year. But these numbers were the least of my research. Next up is Florida. As of 2020, 27,487 people have been shown to be on the streets every single day. And for the school department, it's shown 91,068 public school students have experienced homelessness over the course of the year. Now we might think this is the worst, but to California, it gets much worse. As of January 2020, California has estimated 161,548 people experiencing homelessness on any given day. And their school district is even what? It's even worse. Having estimated 271,528 kids experiencing homelessness over the year. Now, what can we do to fix this? One, one thing I pointed out earlier was permanent supportive housing. These housing programs are decided as a solution to help effectively end homelessness and the longevity, and it always costs us more. Now, for these solutions, it's easier said than done. 
there's a lot of things involved called like costs and then you know, other resources, like getting them help and creating the job opportunities. Rapid rehousing. Rapid rehousing goals is to find families who've just recently been on the streets and as quickly as, as quickly as possible, sorry, quickly as possible, get them off the streets to eliminate the effects of being homeless for a long period of time. Um, creating career opportunities. Housing and stability or being homeless is mostly created by by financial insecurity. And a, a lack of employment opportunities makes finding a stable income difficult in the current economy, and it's becoming more worse as the years go on. Educating youth. 346% of kids without a diploma are more likely to be homeless. So if we could help educate more kids and we can keep kids in school for longer and show them the way to become more successful, or just even avoid being homeless, this would also help. Not to end, my, to end my speech, there's a wonderful quote from Benjamin Franklin. There are three sorts of people in this world. Those who are movable, people who don't get it, and people who don't want to do anything about it. Those who are movable, people who see the need for change and prepared to listen to it. And there are people who move, people who make things happen. And if you can encourage more people, there will be a movement, and the movement is strong enough. That's in the best of the sense word, a revolution. And that's what we need. Thank you.